Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars. You don't get to say that every day. And some of my favourite people, and we've certainly got one for you today. Urs, how are you? I'm great, thank you, Alex. I like to call you Mr Il Devo. I mean, without you, they'd be nothing, wouldn't they? <laughs> I guess I can't say more about <laughs> each individually. Isn't it incredible? I did your first interview all those years ago, and there you were, just four guys singing up a storm, and we fell in love with you and your voices. It's a dream, really, the Il Devo story. Totally, totally. And as you say, you know, can you believe it's 15 years ago now? Mm. And that is 15 years ago. And it happened in the UK, and you were there, and nobody knew what this was going to be. Uh, and it just exploded and the UK audience is the first one in the world who embraced us and you know and, and put us up there and put us out there and let us you know go on this journey which still lasts now and that's why UK is always even though none of us is English actually but mm. the UK always has got a very special place in our heart and it always does feel a bit like coming home when we come back mm. to the UK for shows and what you do is sort of formulaic. You start off nice and quietly with songs we mostly know, and by the end of it, it's this big, incredible, huge, whopping sound. And people like that, don't they? We know where it's going, and you all get to shine singularly and then collectively at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just... You know, I mean, we obviously we have been trying to reinvent ourselves over the years, you know, we've, we've ventured out to look for different producers, to look for different sounds. But somehow, strangely, we always came back to to what works for El Divo. And I think, what is the quality of El Divo and what is unique in El Divo? And I think the way we combine our four voices within one song, it just lends something to the music that each one of us individually and uh, we come back to Mr. Real Devo, could just not achieve. <laughs> you know, you can be as great of a singer uh, personally as you want to be, but somehow when the four of us are together on stage and sing together, something happens that even I, after 15 years, I can't explain. It's just very, very powerful. And I think that's what just made the people fall in love with us and makes us still be able to step after them. 15 years onto that stage and make people very, very happy. And of course, I mean, it's a given, you're all delicious. I first saw David in La Boheme on Broadway probably nearly 20 years ago now with a, a guy called Al Alfie yeah. Bow. I don't think he's ever done anything. Uh, but uh, you four stand together <laughs> and the ladies find you a nice bit of trouser. We know this, don't we, Urs? Uh, well, I suppose so. <laughs> you know, I can always deflect these questions quite easily because Carlos <laughs> It's very eager to answer to those, and I can just <laughs> stay the good, true, and faithful husband I am. <laughs> And of course, that's what's incredible. Over the 15 years, you've all become men and you've all got families and you're all doing your own thing. I mean, it's an incredible amount of time to be together. And of course, your lives have changed in so many ways. Looking back must be remarkable because your lives are very different when you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, they still do change, you know. Uh, I mean, David's probably been living the most stable life of all of us. I mean, he's he met his wife just before coming into the vault and they were together. They got married somewhere down the line. They still married. You know, I mean, Carlos got married, divorced. Um, you know, Sebastian got married at some point and uh, had three children. And uh, I mean, I had a long relationship. I had a daughter, but then that broke apart and I'm married for two and a half years now. So yeah, life just still goes on and it's crazy. What's the stage door like for Il Devo? I mean, I've seen these ladies. There's between sort of 700 and 7,000 per night who are basically gagging for any one of you or any part of you. It must be awful to turn down the temptation. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's quite funny, but I think the good thing is as well, I, I don't know. I mean, since I'm married, and I'm, I mean, I'm like in my, in my late 40s as well, I don't know. I... Gosh, I'm over that, you yeah. know. I'm over the temptation, please. I know uh, who I am. I know what I want in life. Yeah. And I've got what I want. And so I, 
I do not have a problem with that. I know there are other, other characters mm. very nearby, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who would think completely differently and <laughs> still say, why have one if I can have many? <laughs> It is, isn't it? It's that old gag about why uh, buy a book when you can join a library. I suppose it depends. Some people like a library. Some people want a bookshelf. I suppose it's. It depends which type you are. Exactly. Tell me about the relationship between you and the boys. I mean, how close are you able to be? Because you basically live in four continents, most of you, most of the time, don't you? Yeah, that's true. But then again, you have to consider that most of the year we spend touring. So, mm. I mean, even though if we have home in four different countries, we probably spend uh, one and a half months a year there. So the rest we do actually spend together. Mm. We are we are somehow very close and somehow not. We know each other very well, as you can imagine, after 15 years spending so intensely together. Um, then yet, again, we are four very different personalities from each other. So we don't live in each other's pockets. We when we are off work, we're not spending time together. We just because we are just live different lives, have different interests, have different personalities, mm. and we come together and do our shows and do our records and uh, do our interviews and stuff. And we enjoy that. We have a great time. You know, we have our very own dynamic going on between the four of us mm. and yeah and then that's that and then we go off and I have dinner with my wife and uh, and uh, David uh, does his movie project and Sebastian flies home to LA and that's just the way it is and the way it works and it works brilliantly like that yeah and you've survived for 15 years and you're back on the tour uh, this year in the UK and we get to see you not in arenas this time but often theatres which is such a blessing I loved seeing you in those arenas but there's something magical about a theatre with your voices you literally raise the roof don't you I think it's the, our audience as well does in general prefer uh, a bit of a smaller setting but a nice setting mm. I think, you know, just something, it's, it's just like the whole appearance, the, the the suits we wear and everything, you know. I mean, in the beginning we got laughed at for that, but it's just what fits the music we're doing. And I think I'm coming back to the Royal Albert Hall, which is one of the most beautiful venues in the whole world mm. you can play, and I'm so excited about that. And I think that just makes such a perfect setting for an Ildivo concert because yeah and especially you know last July when we played all the uh, the stately homes and and the backdrops of these castles were fantastic but then the the, the straw and the dust you know <laughs> out in the audience it's just for a lot of people you know we have got a lot of um, elderly people as well who come to our shows and enjoy that very much people who come in wheelchairs and are having a great time and it's just yeah, for El Divo, it is ideal if you can accommodate these people in a nice, comfortable setting. So, yeah, we're looking very much forward to playing a lot of theatres this time. And, of course, the new album out as well. You can find all, all the details about the tour and the albums and all the rest of it by going to the website. Just put Il Devo into Google and it will come up first. I've said to you many times before, I think the joy for you boys must be having those live orchestras. So few get that privilege. And to have the roar of the four of you on top of it, it must be sensational by the end of the evening to realise how unique and special that is. So few people get that privilege, do they, to sing with these glorious orchestras? Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's a very, you know, singing in El Devo, um, doing El Devo shows is a very, a very physical thing. But I mean, I mean by that, you know, it's obviously, it's a big physical effort, you know, to sing the way we sing. But it also, it kind of, it, the music literally that fills the whole stage with the four of us and the orchestra, it flows through your body mm. for that 100 minutes that we are there. And it's just... It's every night is a great experience. Uh, it's yeah, it just puts it. It's it makes you high, really. You're high on adrenaline from all of that, and it's just I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Tell me about that feeling. You wake up in the morning and you go, <coughs> and you're not quite at a hundred percent yet. Unfortunately, you've still got uh, twenty shows to do ahead of you in a tour. That must be the most terrifying feeling ever. Uh, it doesn't make me very nervous. I have to admit, I don't have stage 
stage fright, you know, but obviously you need the voice mm. if you want to perform the concerts and it's uh, it's hard what we're doing. Yeah. So if I feel, even, even if the voice is there, but I think, oh my gosh, I only slept five hours tonight, it still makes me nervous. Mm. And even if the voice is perfect, then I just will try at any cost, you know, to lay down another hour before the show or something. I mean, the travel and the, the I mean, at the moment we're in Western Canada and it's just in general, it's deep winter here. Well, we're in Vancouver now, last show tonight. Mm. But we've been in Alberta and it's deep winter there. It's like minus 25 degrees and it's very, very dry. And uh, yeah, you just really have to be very, very uh, tempering with your voice in that kind of conditions. Uh, it's worked very well so far, but I've mm. also done nothing else but traveling and singing so far under these conditions, you know? And that's why also I find it always funny when people think about, oh yeah, after the show, you know, we go to clubs and drink champagne all night. And <laughs> it's just not happening <laughs> because we have, we have very short tours like that. I always think of you boys when I go to Las Vegas and I sit in that Coliseum where Celine Dion does such big business and I think there, there would be no better show to see in Vegas than you, Il Devo, live in Las Vegas. Has this been something you've thought of? Because in the old days, you know, Vegas was a bit crap post Sinatra and now, of course, Lady Gaga wants to be there. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Is it, would that interest you to do a residency in somewhere like Vegas? Yeah. Yes, I think so. I think I agree with you. I think Ildi was a perfect act for Las Vegas. Um, but then again, you know, we still travel all the world, you know. Mm. We literally travel all around the world through five continents uh, on our tours. And I, I don't know exactly how these Vegas residencies work. I mean, um, people like Celine, she, she does like... Um, seasons as well so she's not literally there like other shows you know yeah. five days a week all year long I think she comes for a couple of months and plays uh, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday yeah we would definitely do considering uh, that because I think it's very suitable for Vegas and I personally I love Vegas yeah I me too Vegas has got so much to offer you know all the shows all the fantastic restaurants and if you get sick of the strip you go out of the city and you drive an hour and a half up to Utah and you're in the mountains you know yeah. it's Hey, listen, I can't wait to see you on tour. June 20th, Brighton, uh, South, Cliffs, South End Cliffs Pavilion, 21st. You come to Bournemouth and Glasgow. Newcastle City Hall, 25th of June, 27th, Liverpool. Of course, you're coming to Cardiff Motor Point Arena and then Birmingham Arena. Nottingham Raw Concert Hall, July the 1st. I'll see you there. Let's have dinner. Royal Albert Hall on the 2nd and Sheffield on the 3rd. You can get all the dates by going to Il Devo's website. Urs, it's always a pleasure. I have huge respect and I love you guys very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.